Hey everybody and welcome back. Certainly glad you could join me today. In this episode, we're going to get started on our character screen. This is the screen that will allow us to place characters on the screen and have them clickable or interactable. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting the notification icon. That really helps me out. Also, give us a thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments below if you enjoy this video. If you are interested in supporting the channel, you can do so visiting the Patreon linked in the description below or simply by becoming a member hitting the join button next to the subscribe button. So for those of you who've been paying attention in the last video, we completed the item screen and you should now be able to fully create your own game world full of clickable items that will do something when you click on them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to follow a similar kind of principle to create our characters. But in order to uh, make it more interesting, we have to do a couple of other things as well. Now, the first thing that you're going to need is some images. So if I just quickly go into this image, as you can see, I've created an image there that does that and an image there like that. And these are going to help us demonstrate these principles. So I'm going to change one of these characters. In fact, I'm going to change the very first character and I'm going to change his name to a girl name. And the code friendly name is simply going to be Beth. And she's going to be, I've got to remind myself what these properties are, location zero is active equals true. Cool. That's fine. So what we need to do now is we're going to create a new screen. So in our screens folder, we're going to add a new file. I'm going to call this one characters screen dot RPY like that. And then in here, we're going to declare a new screen and it's going to be character. We're going to make this capitals just because character screen that boom so we're going to have to now remind ourselves of what some of our lists are called so we're going to come back into our classes and as you can see we've got a list called characters so we're going to copy that and we're going to say for q in characters now we're going to say if q dot is and now we come back to our class again to check that that property correction is true so it is active days yeah and so what we're doing here is we're going to check if the character is active before we do anything else because we may have a, a number of characters um so there's no point if they're not active there's no point going any further in the check so the first thing we're going to check is is active now you could apply that same principle to the, the item screen if you wanted to as well so we're going to say if q dot is active now we've given our characters numbered locations instead of words. So what we need to do is we need to come down here. So we have this method that returns an integer for our location. So we can actually use that to compare whether or not the character is in our location. Now we could do that inside the screen loop, but what would actually be a better thing to do is to create a new property. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say at property. And we're going to say define is local. And what we're going to do is we're going to go for a global location. And we're just going to come down and we're going to check this so actually we don't need to do that. What we can do is we can simply say if self dot location, we're going to do a capital L for that. Because that's the property equals equals. And we're going to come back down to here and we're going to catch all of this. And we're going to paste that there. And we're going to say return true else we will return and we don't need to put an else in there we can just say return false there so there we go so now all we need to do is check if 
the character is in the same location as the player. Obviously, you're not going to display the image if the player is not there. But we're just going to simply copy this. And we could actually say and view dot is local. And now all we need to do is we need to populate those characters onto the screen if they're active and if they are local. So what we're going to do is we're going to do image button. And we can actually go to our clicks screen. So we'll find our main UI there, item screens, background image, clicky screen. There we go. And we can actually just copy all of this here and we can just paste it in like so. So now we need to just make some changes to this property. So first thing we need to do is change that to avatar. I believe that is what the property is called. Let's go to there and we'll just double check. Yep, capital A avatar. And we'll do the same thing in the idle. Like so, focus mask equals two. We're gonna set variable to click type. Now we need to do something different in there because we don't have the option of multiple click types in this character so all we're going to do is we're going to change that to say character and then we're going to say return and we need to change that as well to u dot name or we could say q dot full name just to make absolutely sure but we'll just say name there like so, and then we're going to double check that it is in fact a capital N on name. We can create a new file, that was silly. So there we go. Check that it is first name. So actually the character doesn't have a name, it just has a first name, surname, code friendly name. So we're actually going to use the code friendly name. So we're just going to copy that. Like so. And we'll return that instead. So there we go. That's returning that property. And then we are going to do full name here. Just check again that we've got that property correctly. It's full name with a capital N. Yep, we got that right. Cool. So in terms of actually creating the screen, it's fairly basic. We're just going to simply go through them. If they're active and if they're in the same location as us, then we're going to create an image button on the screen, which is going to comprise of the avatar value that we create inside the class. Once we click on the uh, icon, we can set the click type to character and we're going to return the code friendly name. Then we're going to uh, set the tooltip to be the name of the person in the screen. So now we need to check our avatar property because that I suspect is probably far from correct. Okay, so we've got our images slash avatars, which is the folder that we have here images avatars with a capital A so we're going to just capitalize that to make sure that it's correct and now we're saying the code friendly name which is in this case going to be Beth then it's going to be underscore then it's going to say the code friendly location name which in this case is garden so we can always just double check that the code friendly name for the location is indeed garden which it is as you can see here and then it's going to say at plus PNG. So we need to copy this and we're going to do it like that. Okay, so we also need to do an output A and output B scenario here. So we're going to say output A and output B. And in this one, we're going to add our sequence. And then we're also going to add our chapter. We'll do chapter first because that makes more sense. Chapter plus sequence plus PNG. We can in fact get that information from here as well. So we're just gonna be that whole chunk of text there. And we're just going to paste it over here like that. So we've now got a string of the chapter, string of sequence. We actually need to get the global values of those. like that so that it actually knows what to reference. I'm gonna just delete one of those pluses. We actually need to double check that we've actually done that in our item screen as well. So yes, we have awesome source. So now what's gonna happen is we're going to check if output A exists, uh, output B exists. 
otherwise return output A. So we're going to say if renpy.loadable output B return output B otherwise return output A call you happy days so what we need to do here is nothing that should be good to go so what we're doing is we're checking we're creating two variables one with the chapter and sequence on the end the same as we did in the clickable icons if it doesn't exist then we will jump straight back to the one without and then it will return them now we could again put a if renpy.loadable and create a default icon which would put a question mark in the corner or something um and you're more than welcome to do that you should be more than capable of creating that from what we've added to the clickies but um yeah so that's ready to go the next thing of course that we need to do is actually add that screen so we're going to copy that into our main ui so we want it to be on top of the clickies but we want it to be underneath the rest of the ui so it's not going to interfere with anything else so let's say use character screen there so now our characters can be positioned on top of items that can be clicked upon that makes more sense than having it the other way around so we're not going to save that so one thing that you will want to quickly change before we do this is if you go into the bottom of your classes file and you find the code friendly location number uh, method um, you'll notice that I and Q need to be swapped around see it with the enumerate locations statement so where it says for on yours it will say for Q comma I just swap those over so it says for I comma Q and then it will work correctly so then when we jump into our game we can launch the project and we go to start so we'll quickly go to the garden and there she is. Now you'll notice it looks a bit weird because she has no shadow because I've simply cut out this character from a render initially. So what you'll need to do is when you create these images is just make sure that you use Photoshop or whatever your image editing tool is to add a uh, simple um, shadow underneath them so that it looks like she's actually sitting on the sofa rather than hovering above it but initially that's all you'll need to do to create a character screen and in the next episode we will look at what to do once the character has been clicked on so i hope you found that useful folks let me know what you think in the comments below take care of yourselves until next time see you soon guys bye bye